Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One. Good vibrations. I'm going to describe another idea that I've actually tried many times and have described uh, in, to various, in various ways in other videos, and that is the grounding of the far end of a wire antenna. Uh, usually, uh, in my case, it's been a long wire. I've done this with long wire antennas, but the antenna doesn't necessarily have to be a long wire. In fact, it can be as short as, well, let's leave this at black. It can be as short as one-fourth wavelength, but it has to be a quarter of a wavelength or more. Now, on 160 meters, that would be 130 feet. So uh, that doesn't necessarily mean the wire is short. But if you, normally you think of the far end of an antenna as being free, uh, an insulator and some rope and a support, and it's usually high up in the air. But it doesn't have to be. Uh, especially on the lower bands. Um, if you ha Suppose you had just a 160 meter, one quarter of wavelength wire, 130 feet. If the far end were free, you would see a low impedance at this point, something on the order of, oh, somewhere 40 to 50 ohms, thereabouts. You might actually be able to stuff it right into the coaxial center conductor part of your outlet of your radio <laughs> without a transmatch at all. But uh, I would always recommend the use of a transmatch. And this can be an unbalanced transmatch, so it doesn't have to be anything very sophisticated. But in any antenna, a quarter of a wavelength uh, long or longer, you can ground the far end rather than leaving it free. Now ideally, if you do decide to do that, you should put some ground radials down to enhance your ground. You might use a post hole digger and some salt, you know the drill, uh, wet it down Put your ground rod in there. Uh, make sure you're not near any plants that you value because the salt will leach into the ground and kill them. Uh, but in any case, you want a, a, a pretty good ground here. You don't want a marginal ground here. And the same would hold true here if you could add some uh, radial wires. And if you I don't know if I'd recommend putting salt next to your house, but uh, just so that you have two very good grounds, one at the feed point end of the antenna and the other at the far end, and that the antenna again be at least a quarter of a wavelength long. But it can be random otherwise, random of course being in quotes. You have a transmatch here. And then you tune this antenna just as you would uh, with your transmatch, just as you would if the far end were free. The big advantage of an antenna like this is that the wire is always at DC ground. And that can be a, a valuable asset indeed when thunderstorms wander near you, um, if the thing should happen to get struck by lightning, that's why you disconnect your antenna from your station whenever you are not using it. But you can just disconnect the antenna and just leave it laying on the ground. Uh, you don't have to uh, 
connect it to the ground rod or anything. Move it away from your house, leave it laying on the ground. Uh, then this this entire conductor will still be grounded. So if lightning should happen to come nearby and create a high electrostatic voltage on this wire, that voltage can't really get very high because it's going to be shorted to ground all the time. This antenna will be inherently safe from the hazards that most antennas face. You'd want a support of some kind in the middle uh, to get it as high as you can. But if this were a, say this were a half wavelength instead of a quarter of a wavelength. Now you're going to get different impedances here than you would get. You'd get 40 to 50 ohms if this uh, were free and a quarter of a wavelength long. But it might be more on the order of a thousand ohms if it were a quarter of a wavelength long and the far end were grounded. If it were a half wavelength long you'd have a very low impedance here. Uh, if this were a half wavelength, let's just suppose it were a half wavelength, it'd be kind of like an inverted V uh, electrically inverted um, an electrically uh, reversed inverted V. The impedance at the center would be very high the impedance at the ends would be very low. But if you have a trans match who cares? And if you've got no feed line who cares? You are of course with, as with any end fed antenna running the risk of RF in the shack when you have an unbalanced antenna like this um, running right down to your shack. But uh, that would happen whether the far end was grounded or not. This is primarily done for safety purposes to protect against the dangers of electrostatic charge buildup near thunderstorms. And if the wire is very long, uh, say you want to use one of those new bands or or say you want to use uh, 160 meters in a three wavelength long wire uh, a considerable charge can build up on on a wire that's not grounded even on a clear day especially if there's a lot of wind if you don't believe me uh, wait till you see uh, sparks jumping across the insulator of the output of your transmatch from your wire to the chassis of that transmatch. Uh, wait until you hear them snapping. Uh, even on a clear day, um, you just uh, this can disrupt the performance of your radio. It can do a lot of bad things, but not if it's grounded. That gets rid of a lot of mischief. Stan Gibalisco signing off, proprietor and operator of W1GV, saying 73 and so long, which, of course, in CW, which I would use on this or any other antenna, always translates to da-da-da-da-da-da.